Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino, and today I'm going to take a look at some of the enhancements in the current Rhino beta that we can expect to see in the released version of Rhino 6. And in this video, I want to take a look at surface matching with history. Let's first take a look at this simple example where I have three surfaces, all of which are single span degree 5 in their construction. I'm going to match the two outer surfaces to the red surface and I'll then be able to adjust the red surface and maintain the match at both ends. To start with I'm going to turn on history and I'm going to make it persistent. And I'm going to go to surface and surface edit tools and run the match command. At the select untrimmed surface edge to change prompt I'm going to pick the lower surface here and I'm going to match to the red surface. I'm going to choose Curvature, None for Preserve Other End. I'm not going to use Refine Match because I don't want to add any control points into my result. And I'm going to use Automatic Isocurve Direction Adjustment. And then I'm going to repeat the process at the other end. OK, so we'll see that we now have three surfaces that all match for curvature continuity. I'm now going to turn on the control points and the gumball, start to adjust my red surface and you'll see that both ends of the surface can be adjusted and I can maintain the continuity across the other surfaces. So this is a simple example of surface matching with history. Let's now take a look at a different way in which matching edges with history can benefit our modelling workflow. With certain types of form, very often the best strategy is to maintain the sharp edges of our main surfaces whilst we develop the shape. We then only add the transitional surfaces or blends at a later stage. This is a workflow we describe, for example, in the engine cover tutorial. One of the issues of this method without history is that sometimes editing one of the slab surfaces may mean that we lose the coincident edge of an adjacent surface. We can use match with history to overcome this, as in this example where I'm going to adjust the top and bottom surfaces and have the four outer surfaces update automatically. All of the surfaces here are degree 5 single span surfaces and they have a common control point layout. So to start this I'm going to make sure that my history is on and persistent and I'm going to run the match surface command. This time I'm going to use the multiple match option and I'm going to match the top edge of the vertical surface to my red surface and the bottom edge of the vertical surface to the blue surface at the bottom. Of course here I only want to match for position and leave the other settings as previous. Then I'm going to go around and repeat the process on the other three sides. It's very important to keep using the multiple match option here. This isn't something that automatically repeats. OK, so now I've done the matching. Let's first start with uh, some simple editing of the bottom. So let's turn the uh, control points on. Let's pick all of the control points for that bottom surface. And with the gumball, let's hold down Shift and scale this bottom. And you'll see our, my surfaces update. Let's now move on to the top. Again, turn on the control points, 
and let's maybe pull out a sort of a spout shape on two of the sides here using the scale command. Okay, so you can see how these sides update automatically. Let's do something slightly different on these sides. Again, let's scale, push these inwards and take these points and just move these slightly inwards as well. And then let's get these points and push them down slightly. Okay, so you can see here that we've adjusted the top and the bottom surfaces and these four side surfaces have conformed nicely. Now, because this is proper surface editing, as opposed to solid editing, which looks similar but doesn't give us anywhere near the control, then each one of these surfaces has actually deformed correctly in their smoothness. So we don't have any approximation of the smoothing going on here. And the other thing that we'll be able to do, if I, for example, take a copy of these surfaces and I push them onto another layer, is join these together into a closed poly surface. So you'll see that if I edit these edges in limited ways, I'll be able to maintain the concept of bonded edges so that these four side surfaces will move and adjust with the changes to the top and bottom surface, but they will be within tolerance that I can join them back together into a solid. So this is a really useful workflow for product, automotive, uh, marine design, etc. Let's now take a look at another way in which matching with history can streamline our workflow. Adding creases and styling features into surfaces is something we discuss at length in our intermediate advanced classes. And the history enhancements can make creasing easier in examples like this one. Here I have two degree 5 single span surfaces that are already matched for curvature. If I turn on the environment map you will see that these are completely smooth. And if I turn on the zebras, again, you can see the matching. So what I'm going to do here is to create a match between surfaces that are already matched. And I'm going to do this with my match surface command and I'm going to match the top surface to the bottom surface and I'm just going to match for position. What this should do is not change any of the topology of the surface layout, but it will create effectively a bonded edge between the two. So I can now just adjust the lower surface without having to worry about any of the control points on the upper surface. So I can just pull out here to create a very slight crease. Let's have a look at this. There we go, you can see the very slight crease there. And it makes things much easier now because if I'm looking at sculpting this lower surface, let's take these points here and push these in, it makes it much easier because I don't have to worry now about whether this edge is coincident because history will do this for me. So I can now very easily create this nice combination of concave and convex surfaces that you see in automotive design, for example. Finally, let's take a look at how the matching enhancements can be combined with other history-enabled commands to make surface editing easier. Here I want to create a symmetrical boundary condition, so my starting point is half of the boundary. I'm going to First of all, make sure that my history is set to be persistent and I'm going to run the symmetry command to create a symmetrical copy of the end panel at both ends. And then I'm going to create a mirrored copy of this side. and now I'm going to apply a matching to match the end to the side 
and this end to this side. Now to help me here so I don't edit the wrong side of the surface I'm just going to go to my properties here and change the display color of the side that is controlling everything else and now I'm going to run uh, the match command so surface edit tools and match I'm going to match the end to the side and I'm going to match for curvature you see this matches this side and then history automatically updates the other side repeat the process for this end over here and now what you'll see is that if I adjust the side then my matching updates here and if I adjust where I have my symmetry then this will also update okay so you can see here that we're only editing two areas and the whole of our object is remaining curvature continuous if you found this video useful please hit the like button and remember to keep up to date with the latest news on Rhino version 6 please subscribe to this channel thanks very much for watching